Hi, good morning, good morning. Uh, council members, chair, Uhatis, council members. Thank you for letting me testify once again. Um, some of the things I'm gonna be sharing is, you probably heard before, you know, I, I grew up in Lahaina. I have family that's been greatly impacted by this tragedy. As some of you may know, I have s several concerns on how we go about <clears throat> addressing the need to come up with a comprehensive plan, a fair plan. And one of my concerns is that the people who were impacted, people that know Lahaina, that grew up in Lahaina, are also included in the planning and in the discussion. In other words, I, I would like to see within this process that, that we have inclusivity and that nobody's excluded for whatever reason. Another concern that has caught my attention and it's a very sensitive topic, but I feel very compelled and it's important to bring this up. Some of you may disagree with this, but I'm in constant touch with members of my family, members in the community from Lahaina, and especially those that I grew up with that lost the loved ones, that has lost their homes, their possessions, lost their jobs. They're displaced, they're scattered all over. A few of them, my cousins that are sitting up there, are finally starting to come back to Maui. They had to leave out of state to go stay with relatives. And, and I'm glad that they're coming home, but I'm concerned because what's gonna happen when the hotels need to open up for tourism and then they're gonna be displaced again. My family, my cousin Jeffrey, I call him my time capsule because when he left in 1976, all he remembers is Lahaina the way we knew it growing up. And he also, like my family, our loved ones were displaced when our grandparents were dug up to make way for tourism and their remains were scattered all over the islands. The fire devastated Lahaina, so we have another tragedy. So that's the second time my family has been displaced. And then now the survivors of that fire are again looking at being displaced because there's no long-term solution. I understand it's gonna take some time. The thing that I'm noticing in my conversations every day, people reaching out to me, is that if we're not careful in our approach, in our process, there's going to be a cultural war. And I've had several people already making that statement to me, it's their words. Because what they're hearing is on one side, people are making videos on YouTube saying that we will not let Lahaina become a tourist resort again. And other comments such as, you know, all of Hawaii is ready to fight. Yeah, I get it. I understand. You know, I'm proud to be Hawaiian. But yet at the same time, I'm very concerned that what's happening in Lahaina, the community and those that are leveraging this tragedy for personal gain, for political gains, let's really think about this because I do not want a cultural war to come out of this at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chair Lee. Aloha. Awesome. Hi. Good to see you. So you talk about these um, different groups. Um, are they large groups? Or yes, like they, two yes. groups or three groups? I mean, how, yes, how they are. split are they? Um, they're, they're large groups and they're gaining momentum. They're gaining attention. Mm -hmm. And you know, a few of them I've ran with for several years. Fundamentally, we share the same concerns for our community, for our heritage. But as you know, as I've testified back in March, on March 24th, some of those people took a drastic turn. They turned to bullying and violence. You know, and, and these are some of the groups that are out there now. And, uh, you know, the, the, this tragedy is affecting everybody, not just here on Maui or in the state of Hawaii, but in the entire world. We're seeing it every single day whether it's on social media or it's on mainstream media, um, te television. I, I, I mean, um, uh, my cousins lost their home. That's our ancestral land. Our tutus are literally buried there. It's gone. 
they're displaced. If I had a gazillion dollars, I would take care of everybody first. Everybody, every single person from La Haina. It doesn't matter whether you're a businessman or you're just a, you know, resident. But I'm not. All I can give is my time, my energy, my thoughts, you know, and my sincerity. You know, I don't have a hidden agenda. I don't have ulterior motives. I'm not out there to, to do photo ops. You know, I, I really want people to be helped in a real sincere way. And you know, Council Member Lee, uh, you know, I can name names to answer your question directly, but I, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, we don't have all. to name names. I just wondered how divided and, and if we had a chance of bringing people together, that's all. Honestly, I think I think the answer to that, and two people asked me that question. What can we do as a community to really address these concerns in a positive, positive way? And I'm going to say this knowing that I'm going to get a lot of spears and rocks thrown at me from the Hawaiian community, but I'm going to say it right here and now in public. Every single one of us in our community, whether you're Hawaiian or not, the leadership needs to step up and take responsibility. Stop condoning all the BS out there. People are seeing so much of the tragedy being leveraged against the victims like my cousin. Thank you. We as a community, the leaders in the Hawaiian community need to take ownership and start walking the walk and not just talk the talk. Thank you, Mr. Humpong. Um, member Kama, real quick, I'm going to introduce Member Rollins okay. Fernandez, who has just joined sure. us online, and then you can answer your question. Oh, Foster. Thank you for being here, Foster. I like the fact that you come and you speak truth. And therefore, my question is, um, how much of the groups that you are um, associated with that you have been mentioning today regarding Charlie, uh, follow the Kapu Aloha. Okay, so I, to, to answer your question, I'm, I'm gonna start with, I don't belong with any group. I paddle my own canoe kind of thing. Um, how many follow the Kapu Aloha? I, I, I don't know. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, I, I do know one, Lo Iloa, you know, Kapevehi? Yeah. He, he, he has an educational organization and he's teaching the kids. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member Kama. I, I have a quick question for you. So I, I hear you when you say that there are several different groups. You know, this committee is going to listen to everybody who comes out today and whoever comes out in the following meetings by. Do you have any suggestion on how best we can contact everybody so that they can provide testimony? So we've done obviously this meeting, which was agendized, as well as we had some on the council, mem uh, council meetings. We had a press release. I see that you share things on Facebook. Is there any other way that we can, you know, get message out there that we are here to listen? I went to school with Rick Nava. He and I are classmates. So Rick is a leader in the Filipino community. I have accepted the kuleana in my family, the kimokeo ohana. So when people ask me what title do I carry or where, I, I really don't have a title. But I guess I am, I am the family historian because I do the genealogy and I do the research. So in my family, the kimokeo ohana, um, that's another resource. And then... Uh, of course, there's the uh, civic clubs, there's the, the union reps. You know, these, these represent different facets of our community. And, and as, as I've said before, our community is multi-ethnic. You know, there's a few nonprofit groups like Pilikoko that can also assist in getting the words out. So I, I'm sure we can find, you know, reputable, credible groups out there. It just may take some time and some thinking. But offhand, Council Member U Hodges, that's... I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Members, Thanks. any more questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for your testimony.